Hey, what's up, volleyball fans? Welcome to the VB Adrenaline Podcast. I'm Darren Tipton, your guide to the hottest news, topics, prep prospects, and latest buzz in the world of volleyball. Each week, we'll be spotlighting the rising stars that are shaking up today's game. Plus, we'll address the topics and bring you guests that will provide information on trends that has everybody talking courtside. Stay tuned for the lowdown on standout players and an insight from top coaches and people in the business. Be sure to connect with us on social media, on Instagram at vbadrenaline.com underscore and Twitter at vbadrenaline. Now everybody grab a seat and let's dive in. All right. Hey, everybody. It's Darren Tipton with another episode of VB Adrenaline Podcast. And welcome back. Uh, we are getting to talk with uh, some of the coolest coaches and programs and people involved in the fastest growing sport in the country. And at no level is the popularity of volleyball exploding more than college. Um, and this week, we are lucky enough to be joined by Kirstie LaRue, and she is the recruiting coordinator, assistant coach at Texas, and if anybody knows or has a pulse at all, they know that Texas is right in the forefront of this explosion, college volleyball, back-to-back -back national champions, um, not a bad time to be a Loghorn, so coach, uh, welcome and, and uh, congratulations. Thank you so much. I'm excited to be here. It's been a whirlwind, honestly, but excited to be here with you guys. Yeah, absolutely. It it uh, it has been a whirlwind. We met. Um, tell everybody a little bit of the backstory, and we met at National Training Day Program USA Volleyball in Anaheim. And how long ha have you been at other training sessions? Was that your first? How, what's your involvement been there? First of all, yeah, I have done. Every NTDP besides the Fort Lauderdale, so for the last two and a half years, um, my first one was in Chicago. So I have been around a lot, and it's just so refreshing to see those athletes go from, like, 14-year-olds to now, like, 17, and just, like, their development just with their personalities and uh, turning into young women. So, yeah, I've been around with NTDP for a while. Yeah, absolutely. You have it. And now actually that you say that I was in uh, Colorado Springs and now I remember that I saw you. I didn't get to meet you, but I, <coughs> excuse me, I did see you there as well. But um, with NTP, talk to people about the growth and the development and, you know, Karch's philosophy on building the national program uh like so many more international so many other countries do and maybe usa volleyball is a little bit late to that start getting everybody on the same page yeah i think uh just overseas you'll always have a, a b team that it can be young athletes anywhere from 12 to you know all the way up to 18 years old practicing alongside that professional team and so to have those athletes in the gym where team usa practices for the entire summer is just phenomenal um and then karch is obviously there walking through he talked to uh, a few of our teams and and so i think it just creates this bridge between like where i am today and then i'm dreaming big where i can be and so I'm just super excited for these athletes to tell the story about how they were training in NTDP and now they're two time Olympians. Um, and I don't know, it kind of takes away the stressors of that gym and it feeling bigger than it truly is. Um, so I think it's just such a great opportunity for them to get in those environment and then for them to also compete alongside uh, their future teammates. Uh, not only in college, but possibly on the national team. Yeah, and and you're right. Um, that was something I recognized in Fort Lauderdale, which was my first experience in that gym. Um, but there weren't nerves, maybe a little bit for a first-timer session one, but 
I've commented in our coverage a couple different times. It is amazing how well and how quickly they gel together. And it's not like they're there for a tryout. They are truly there to push themselves and get better together. And it, it's such an amazing dynamic that happens so quick. Yeah, it does happen very quickly. And I think Karch just does such a great job at like speaking with the teams and making sure that they understand the purpose of this training camp. And um, also we bring in a specialist to work on like the mindset. Um, and so a lot of these athletes have gone through the program um, a couple times. And so I think when they get in there, it's it's a celebration. They get to know um, the college coaches better as humans, right? Instead of um, saying, oh my gosh, that's an assistant coach for Texas, I'm coach CJ. And yeah. so it just makes their process less stressful. So it is a pretty refreshing environment to be in where we're just all people um, who love volleyball and, and trying to get them better. Yeah, and for what we um, do and coverage and talking, recruiting and prospects and the next generations of great players, there's uh, there's maybe no better place to be when you talk about best versus best. The talent level there is is crazy, um, and like you feel like you should be walking around writing every single name down because one other coach talked to me. They're like, hey. Everybody in this gym is going to have a shot to go Division One if they want to. I mean, they're here for a reason. Um, and with some, it's earning their way to be invited back again um, or, you know, be seen by more people. But, wow, the, the high level. Is, is that something you've even noticed in the last few years, the overall just talent of younger athletes being higher than it was your, my, my natural reaction would be yes, but is that something that you have definitely seen being in that NTDB environment? Oh, absolutely. I just feel like professional volleyball is more accessible. Um, I know a lot of these athletes following the best middle blocker in the world. They might not be necessarily American. They might be from Serbia or Turkey, but there's access. And so I think just the volley IQs are getting, you know, higher and, yeah, I definitely see that there's just more volleyball being played yeah. in general. Yeah. So you just see a big, um, a big jump in how they view the game. So it's pretty exciting. Well, and, and talk uh, briefly about the mental um, training because that was something. As we interviewed a few of the athletes before, and then we talked to a few right uh, immediately after almost every single one of them talked about the biggest thing they improved on or that has helped them has been that mental training aspect. Um, so talk about what that is a little bit in USA Volleyball's um, focus with that and how that's helping the top level athletes just get 1% better. Yeah, so I think the mental aspect now has been at the forefront of volleyball most recently, uh, especially since Karch Karai has been the um, head coach for the national team. And I think teammateship has been such a big thing. How do you get in these stressful environments and not only make it about yourself, but try to really go out there and be the best teammate possible so that you can protect the, the system that – all of these athletes are in and that system is it's a high stress environment and sometimes you make mistakes and you have to rebound quickly and so um, when they bring the specialist in she just talks with them about breathing exercises their mindset um, just how you talk to yourself so self-talk is a big one um, and how do you get back down to calm um, and good enough and so Diving into that, I could see it really helps those athletes. And then it gives us coaches tools where we can all speak the same language to them when it comes to just the mental part of the game. So super powerful. <clears throat> That's awesome. And, and I, I really didn't think we were going to take that direction talking so much about NTDP. But what I mean, for me, it has been such a cool experience just to be in that gym and learn. And um, you don't know, but 
Um, anybody who's been around me knows how little I know about the technique of volleyball. So I'm probably around taking notes on what you guys are coaching more than the athletes are even listening. I get more from you guys. Um, I'm like, okay, I get to listen to Division One head and uh, assistant coaches for two days, instruct. Uh, so it's helped me a ton. But it it's uh, it's such a cool experience for those kids. And and I always say, any chance, I don't care at what level, you get to put on the red, white, and blue. Um, for a couple days, that's something you're going to remember forever, I would think. Yeah, I agree. I mean, I think the system is just getting better and better, especially with the classifications, the U19, uh, U21, all that. So they not only have their high school team, their club team, now they have their USA team. So super, super powerful. Absolutely. So, well, we're here, and we come back, we're going to dive into everything Texas volleyball, um, and I'm interested to learn a lot more about that. But uh, let's take time right now, and let's uh, meet our three spotlight player profiles for the week, and you can be seen on vbadrenaline.com, and our list keeps growing. And again, everybody, remember, with these athletes, it's them being able to have a platform to tell their recruiting journey. Um, We had a couple more 2029s this year, uh, this week that signed up, and it's going to be awesome to watch them over the next couple of years. So athletes, if you want uh, a space to tell uh, your journey and be seen, this is a great uh, a great platform. We love it because we're getting to learn about so many of the top prospects around the country. Um, and it's a quick, easy way. If you want to go fill that out, uh, check it out on vbadrenaline.com. But right now, let's meet this week's three spotlight player profiles. Our first player spotlight is Mallory Matheny. Uh, she's a setter on a Bishop Hartley High School and plays for Mincinet Sports in Ohio. Again, this is an athlete that you need to look at her resume and everything that she's accomplished on the court. Looking at maybe her physical numbers may be lower than some of the other top-end D1 prospects, but this is an athlete that produces results. And as you can see, she's already attended the Pitt and Ohio State Select Camp. Next up, uh, another star out of Metro Volleyball, Morgan Williams, outside hitter. Uh, look at the list of select camps on that East Coast uh, that, that Morgan's already attended, uh, coming in at uh, six foot three inches and already a 10 foot three approach touch. Somebody to watch out for, athleticism, explosion, name of her game. Morgan will be highly sought after come the summer and our final final player spotlight Tegan Pocious uh, plays for Rockwood Thunder that solid club out of St. Louis attended Oklahoma Washington Virginia Tech camps uh main position right now in clubs middle hitter possibly an opposite or an outside at the college level uh Tegan read up on her resume and coming in at six foot you can see her her variables but again Great volleyball education in that Rockwood Thunder program. All right, everybody. Uh, welcome back. The player profiles again at vbadrenaline.com and something that's been very popular and growing on our site. So we're excited about that. And it just gives us a chance to learn about so many kids that we take notes of and then we watch them at club tournaments. Um, at NTDP, wherever it might be, and we're like, we know just a little bit more. Um, I'm excited to see those develop as we go through. Uh, but on this week's episode, we are here with uh, Coach uh, Kersey LaRue and Assistant Coach Recruiting Director at Texas. And we jokingly said when we first met, I said, we need, you need to convince me to be a Texas fan Right. And I'm pretty impartial. But tell me, let's dive into what Texas volleyball is and what you've learned, because you were passionate um, when I asked you how your first year in Texas went. Um, You were extremely passionate about how great of an experience it's been. Um, Texas volleyball is family. I think when you have a moment to talk to any of us coaches or athletes like it's an environment that you want to be a part of because it is a place where not only you can be mentored, but you can 
can be yourself. And I think we empower our athletes to be themselves. Also, we're just so connected as, you know, a, an entire staff that the athletes have the autonomy to kind of, you know, lead the way there. And it's very culture based and player driven. Um, it doesn't always have to come from Jared, but Jared is, I don't know, he just gives us all so much autonomy to do our jobs and he doesn't micromanage. And I think our athletes can see that day in and day out and it allows them to just be able to show up and, and be them and go out there and compete. And so I don't know when I'm coaching, Jared really allows me to coach in a way that feels true to me. And I think when the players can see that and feel that, they're able to just relax a little bit, enjoy the moments. And I don't know, you could kind of see just in our level of play and how we interact with each other, that it's authentic, that it's real, um, and that we truly love each other. And so I love being at Texas. I mean, it is the first time in my career that I will be staying a second season at a program. Um, and so I'm pumped. I love it here. My family loves it here. Um, I'm learning so much. Eric, um, Sullivan and David Hunt, they're incredible human beings. And so I don't know, I think on the outside, you might not always outwardly can see just how much love we always have for each other. Um, because it is so competitive, right? We are, you know, you come to Texas, my lights went off. You go to Texas to win national championships. But I think with that, you can just see, like, our culture is is true and it's real. And so, yeah, I'm happy to be here. So maybe talk uh, about uh, about Jarrett and, you know, uh, Coach Elliott. Tell us something as an outsider, a Texan, that maybe we don't, you wouldn't guess or you wouldn't know about him because on the sideline, very stoic, very serious, locked in. But just tell us maybe a lighter side of coach um, that the average person wouldn't know. So Jared is, oh my gosh, I just absolutely adore him. He is such a great boss, but just a great person too. And he's the type of person, like, you can tell him an interest that you have, and he'll send you 10 t TikToks. Um <laughs> throughout the day of how to get it done. And so his brain is always thinking, he's always thinking about how to empower people around them and make them better. Um, and I don't know, he is always talking from a perspective of like empathy, understanding. Um, and I think when you can do that, as long as he's been in the game, that's so powerful. And I think that's why you see um, a lot of the assistants staying at Texas for so long. Um, you know, Eric's been here for 15 seasons and, you know, me and David, we're the new kids on the block, but we don't see, um, a point in us leaving because he creates this environment where we have a lot of work-life balance. Um, my kid comes to the gym every day and hugs all of the players. And so, um, Jared, he's the leader of that and it just sprinkles down to our athletes um our admin and i don't know it's an environment that is very warm and jared is exactly that that's awesome because uh, i think we people forget and um when we see them in the short periods of time that we see somebody, we do realize um, that is their office. They are getting paid very well to win, right? And it's a competitive, serious environment. And so a lot of coaches are, you know, are very intense. And we remember they're human beings um, outside, outside of that. Um, as everybody probably heard a couple minutes ago with uh, my dogs uh, barking in the background, between your lights and my dogs, um, we'll have to do, <laughs> we'll, we'll do some cutting out here. But I, I tell everybody, uh, I've told this story to anybody who will listen, and um, I saw him, you know, I saw Coach, and you guys win it last year, and then I went to the Lone Star for the first time, and um, very new to Dallas, and pull up, and I, I get out, and here is uh, 
you know, there can only be one coach. He kind of stands out um, in a crowd with his look and his height and everything else. And I'm like, that has to be Coach Elliott. And he had the most beautiful pup. And he's out in the, like, valet area of the Omni Hotel, like the most common individual you know, you could have put him anywhere. And so now when I see him, we just talk about our dogs. He, he's super down to earth. He loves his dog. Um, and I don't know, I, my first day on the job, I remember we went, so we were at nationals and we were out recruiting and then we went to a restaurant and people were in our, in our booth. And he was like, you guys can stay. No problem. And I'm like, they can and he is just I don't know I think it surprises a bunch of people when they sit down and talk to him because he is just the nicest person ever super genuine um and I don't know just personable and it's hard not to like Jared like he's an amazing human yeah and that actually was the first time we remembered that that was the first time I actually met you I think it was your first day on the de job and you all sat down next to me at nationals I said something to coach about his dog he at least humored me and acted like he remembered me uh, whether he did whether he did or not but then you and I were sitting by each other most of the time because people kept coming up to him for pictures remember all the athletes wanting pictures with him and you just kind of laughed and I'm like I bet you're a little more used to that now after being with the program a year, but he was so genuine with his time and, and uh, it ended up just being you and I sitting there for a while. Oh yeah. I think he is so humble and he is able to just always have his feet on the ground. And I don't know, I think he's really thankful for all of these experiences and being able to win these national titles and, but he also knows that like the most important thing is just pouring everything we have into our athletes. And so, I don't know, it, it really is great to see him at just a great position in his career, but also see him like humble in every aspect of life. And so, I don't know, that's just who we are as a staff and it makes being around really, really fun. We talk a little bit um, on the court volleyball, I guess you guys um, did just happen to win a national title uh, about a month ago. So let's talk about that real quick. What was it like? Um, we did a bracket preview show. We had some guests on and everybody was making their picks. And, and I didn't know um, I had you get into this, the final four and, and actually the national title game and losing. But the only thing I kept saying was, hey, um, they are the defending national champs. Why is nobody talking about Texas heading into this tournament? Did you guys feel like that a little bit, like under the radar coming in? or And what the heck happened during that, during that tournament? You want to talk about a machine. You know what? I think here at Texas, you kind of get in your little Texas bubble, and we were just – kind of like one match at a time. And so I didn't know what people really thought until we got to the final four and I got around other coaches. I didn't know we were as much of an underdog um, as what people painted, right? And so we kind of had that underdog mentality, but to hear like a lot of people not thinking we would make it out of the first round or second round was like, whoa, okay. Um, so that was a little bizarre, but I think we just really poured into each other. And I think after we won that match at Stanford against Tennessee, I think when you win that type of match, you're kind of like, you know, why not us? Like, we can we can keep knocking on the door. And then um, once we got to the finals, we were playing with a level of confidence that we couldn't create but through our adversity in the season and um i think that's why we were able to come out on top because of that confidence and the faith we had in each other and i don't think a lot of uh, people know that our team is very faith-based um and so i think when you have a team that always thinks of a higher power 
that, you know, those types of comments or, you know, assumptions, they, they really don't touch them. And so, I don't know, it's really player led and, and to see them um, as young women maneuver through all of it has been the most rewarding thing this season. <clears throat> Uh, let's talk a little bit about um, you had made a great comment to me before we got on about, hey, every program has to decide, you know, development versus portal. The portal, you know, is a real thing. H how do you guys look at it? Um, you know, what's the philosophy at Texas um, by, uh, versus maybe, you know, the outside noise? How do you guys look at that at Texas, the portal? Um, because I understand you do have some very talented transfers, but I look at the incoming freshmen you have, and holy, I mean, <laughs> that's pretty dang good talent there as well. So what, what's your guys' philosophy, and I'm sure it's a big part of your job? Yeah, I think our culture is number one, right? And so we communicate, we over-communicate with our athletes. We let them know what's what's happening, what we're doing, and so there's never – a time where anyone feels, you know, slated or blindsided. Um, and our job is to make these incredible young women into successful women when they graduate from here. And so part of that is, you know, letting them know that we're, we're recruiting and we want the best people here. And, you know, this goes further than just the best athletes. You know, I think we do way more diligence in who we're recruiting than off the court than who they are on the court. And I think that's a piece of the puzzle that many people don't focus on as much. Um, but we do care about our culture so, so much. And so I think the portal is here to stay and it's going to be a part of college volleyball. And there's going to be a lot of opinions about it. But I do think that with our staff, we do develop players and, you know, just looking at David Hunt's resume, you know, he coached with the USA team for many years. Um, he's a world, won a world championship, the first in US, um, USA volleyball history. And so he has a lot of experience. And then Eric Sullivan being a two-time Olympian and, you know, having coached for 15 years. Um, and so I think that that narrative isn't true. Um, that we don't develop our players. We, we do develop our players, and that's always a goal of ours. Um, but we also, I think, Jared has done a great job, and you haven't seen just in athletics in general with coaches in the game for as long as he has been in the game, being able to change with the times. I think he does that flawlessly, and he brings people around that can challenge him, challenge how he thinks. Um, and then he's able to adjust in what's the trends today and, and what do we need to do to always be competing for a national championship. One thing I would, uh, I, uh, compliment on is, uh, your guys' impeccable shoe game. Um, and coach, <laughs> um, not that I consider myself a fashionista by any means, but your shoe game sticks out as second to none and we play we don't play any games when it comes to that like i think david hunt may be the best one on the on the on the staff yeah. jared's close second i'm knocking on third place i don't know it depends on the day with between me and eric um but no we we try to step it up a little bit i think that's just the name of the game right now a lot of staffs are really into shoes so yeah, they might be really in, but again, you guys um, are ahead of the game, at least that I've seen, so much so that uh, last year you motivated me to go and design shoes, uh, Nikes, for my whole crew. So um, based just on how good Coach looked at the Final Four for last year. So um, look good. Uh, what Dion, uh, Prime says, look good, feel good, play good, right? Um, look, so, I agree with that. I agree. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, and then on the athletes end, when you play good, right? Then eventually you get paid good when you go to uh, go to the pros, is what Prime says. So no, I. Uh, so is that something? Um, do you literally do you have like a staff fashion coordinator? Like, hey, these shoes for this game, or is it every coach for themselves? 
You know what? So Jared's wife dresses him. <laughs> Look, so we that. have to give Andrea all the credit for that. Um, I tried to step up our game a little bit more. So as you can see, like at the beginning of the season, I was coming very dressed. And then by the end of the season, I'm like in Nikes. Um, but I would say overall, we, we all have our different styles and different personalities and we poke fun at each other for it. Um, I don't know. It's always fun to just be on the sideline and, and seeing everyone's outfits. Absolutely. I, uh, um, I, I saw that I went to your match at, uh, in Minneapolis at the beginning of the season. And I, I, I literally tweeted that out like it hasn't changed. The shoe game is uh, is still a plus for Texas. So uh, so you guys keep that up. Uh, talk about your as we get closer to the end here. Talk about the pool for Texas or those top couple programs. Right. Um, I've had people tell me, um, you know, other college coaches like, hey, it's really um, Nebraska, Stanford, Texas. Um, are going to take theirs, and then everybody else is fighting for this. Is is that? I mean, are you narrowing it down to just a select few? Are you always changing? And is that list evolving, or is it more of you try and watch athletes that you know are going to be elite from a young age and follow them? How is maybe recruiting at Texas different than? Um, many other schools? That's a hard one. I've only been at three other schools for as, oh, five total. Yeah, I've been <laughs> at five as a player and coach. I will say the biggest difference I see with recruiting at Texas is, and I think this is because of who Jared is, is we really dive into who the person is in a way that I don't think people people would be surprised. Um, and I think that's why we've had success with just our culture on the team. And so, I mean, I think we try to narrow it down, but like I said earlier, like we still keep it an open mind. And I think every every athlete's different. And so it's hard to like say, oh, we're only competing with these four schools. I think that there's so many great coaches out there and so many great programs that we're competing for recruiting with. I think we just try to focus on what we do best and that's our culture. And then the rest takes care of itself. Um, I think the winning is always great when you win national championships, but I also think having a clear vision as to like, what will look like in four years, what will look like in eight years, uh, and laying that out there is always great as well. And uh, newsflash to anybody, um, there's just a little bit of high school and club talent in the state of Texas. Um, so it, if the university ever decides to cut your travel budget, I think you guys will be just fine. Holy cow. I don't know how anybody even tries to rank that stuff. It is amazing, um, me being from where I'm from in the Midwest. Um, yeah, people are like, yeah, Newsflash has been that way for decades. But it, it is insane how much talent and high-level talent there is in the state of Texas. Yeah, I, I just feel like it's just getting better and better. <laughs> yeah. um, high school volleyball is just amazing here, and it's so competitive, so – to come from the West Coast to here has just been amazing. Yeah, and I mean, volleyball is a passion in the Midwest, um, but there is so uh, much talent. It's crazy. And, and and I told a couple of our content creators, I'm like, hey, can we back off and give Texas, uh, the state of Texas now, a break for a couple weeks? Can we write about somebody else? And then I'm like, we're not wrong on any of those kids we just wrote about. Like, we and, and we could pick another ten next week, um, uh, you know. And it it is amazing, and then you watch them, and um, yeah, you could have just had had that in uh, Austin or Dallas or 
whatever place. So I'm excited for my couple trips uh, to the Lone Star State. Um, one, because the food's amazing and the talent isn't, uh, isn't horrible, uh, horrible either. But, um, Coach, I'm going to let you go wrap up on this. We ask every coach, every player that's been through recruiting, a huge part of our mission statement is the education um, of further recruits so their process is better and they make the best decision for themselves. As a recruiting coordinator and somebody who's been a successful player and coach, um, what is maybe your one or two best pieces of advice for these 2026s who um, might be starting to get a little anxious thinking about this June? I will say um, to trust your gut. I think that you just have to go in with an open mind of, okay, what do I need and what makes me my best version of myself and how would I like to be coached? Um, and also kind of putting filters on things as to what's important to you and your family. Um, but also knowing that it is a marathon and you can dictate how you want the experience to go. Um, and so being confident in that, it's not always easy, especially being, you know, a young athlete to, to create boundaries there. But I think boundaries are always great in anything you're going to do. And so it's the first step of many in creating those and knowing that what's for you will be for you. And so, um, your journey might look differently than your teammate and that's okay. Um, and I just think good things happen to good people. And so, if you have a positive perspective on it and you go into it um, being very optimistic, good things will happen. So would you would you expand just a little bit on what you say? Because I, I think I understand and I really like it, but you talked about starting to do filters. And, um, you know, wh what do you mean by that filtering things out that might not be for you and how that can help them? I think that, you know, when you sit back, there are so many great programs out there. And if you're able to key into what you need to feel great, that can be a filter that you just need to ride on um, and not allow others to say, well, maybe this could be good. If you know inside of you that this doesn't feel right or that you wouldn't do well um, if you were cold or you wouldn't do well if you were too hot or you wouldn't do well being so far from home or being too close to home like that's okay to know and I think if you're able to create just like those boundaries of like what is okay for me what can I kind of flex a little bit it can just make this whole process feel a little less stressful so kind of leaning into that and always keeping an open mind but knowing yourself and where you will flourish a little. Man, I really, man, I really want to thank you for that because we've asked a lot of people and they give general ideas. Um, I think what we get from athletes and even parents is, yeah, but how? And and to me, what you just said, I can I can see that, right? I, you talked about being okay with what's important to you, and it doesn't have to be the same thing that's important to your sister or your teammate or your club teammate, right? It, it, and, and truly being okay in your process um, because, you know, you're making a fairly big decision um, at a young age. So, th so thank you for that. Um, and um, I think athletes can really uh, <clears throat> use that to help, help their process. So uh, with that coach, I want to thank you for your time. And again, everybody, Kirsty, um, Kirsty Ledoux, a recruiting coordinator and um, assistant coach at the university of Texas national champions this past year. She's done a ton with USA volleyball. And, and again, um, this is Darren Tipton. This is going to wrap up another episode of our VB adrenaline podcast these get more and more enjoyable every week with some of the people we're able to talk to around the sport as it explodes in popularity um in talent 
and um, in many, many things. So continue to follow along. We appreciate it as our little uh, followership grows. Uh, you can leave us comments on Instagram at vbadrenaline.com underscore and on the X at vbadrenaline.com. So until we're back and we see you again soon, take care, everybody, and thanks for supporting us.